and all to a premium pink wine review. I am the devilishly handsome outlaw himself, your king of extreme, joined by my indomitable broadcast partner, the one, the only, Nurse Ratchet in the flesh. We are here to finish something that we started months ago over at the Revolutionary Wrestling Podcast. And because of that stupid coronavirus, we had to delay, but delay no more. For you, the KOE Nation, we are pulling through and we are doing the Pink Wine Review. We're tied. We are tied between red and white. You ran away with the white wine. Nebraska wine. With a Nebraska white wine against a Napa Valley Chardonnay, mind you. So that was quite impressive. Uh, Everybody loves an upset. Yes, yes. It was out of nowhere. I wouldn't have believed it if I wasn't there to see it myself. Uh, the red wine, I came with a classic uh, German red that I love, and I eked, eked out a victory of that one. So we are tied, and we are going to decide it with who has the best pink wine. She has one white. I have one red. I can at least walk away knowing I won red wine. I, like, oh, God. So now we go. You have been a fair competitor. Yes, as have you, miss. And we will get to that later. <laughs> um, so we decided here with pinks. You are going with uh, something and fairly contemporary. This is Innocent Bystander. It is a Moscato, mm. which is what you expected me to pull out on the way. Yes, yes. This one has been, it even surprised me. Uh, my sister, Poison Dawn introduced me to this and I fell in love with it. Every time I go to Lincoln, this is something I have to get, have to. Hmm. Well, I mean, with that kind of review, I'm looking forward to it. What I went with is, uh, I always try to go with Courts de Provence rosés. I love, uh, love French wines. I always like to say, I like my suits Italian and my wine's French. And so <laughs> this holds, this is Whispering Angle, uh, Courts de Provence, Rosé of 2018, so I've been hanging on to this for a little while, and Courts de Provence was the original maker of rosés all the way back in the 1400s, and so I figured, you know, they probably know a thing or two about making wine, considering they've been making it for a while, so that's always my go-to with pink. So, miss? Let's do yours first. All right. Uh, I have actually been looking forward to getting into this one, just... I have too. <laughs> oh, all righty. I'm not usually a fan of rosé because much like Chardonnay's, it's, it tends to be a little bit drier, but I've expanded, expanded my palate a little bit, so I'm actually really excited about this. Rosé was where I first learned to let a spirit sit on your tongue and let new flavors arise. That was the first time I ever learned to do that because usually, yes, rosés are very bitter, and very dry, but the longer you let it sit there, the more it was like a burst of fruity flavors on my tongue, the longer I let it sit. And so that's where my journey into uh, sherry malts and other varying uh, expensive scotches and bourbons and such kind of started was with rosé. So that's why I uh, always like to come back to it. And yes, folks, if you're going to open a bottle like this, get yourself a server's lever. So much easier. Not corked. Marvelous. And there we are, miss. So, Whispering Angel, Courts de Provence France, classic rosé. Definitely got the color. Ooh, very nice flavor. Yeah, just the, the nose is just... Yes, very nice. Very nice. It's very a bouquet clean. of fruit. I don't know what. It's very clean. Yeah, yeah, there's no. Mm. Oh, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, this one's going to be uh, interesting. Well, uh... I got to say, I'm impressed. That is not at all what I expected. Lightly fruity, lightly. I could see this being a before or after dinner. This would be marvelous for either occasion, but it's, there is a kind of 
light, light bitterness on the back of your tongue. Just a little bit of tang to it. Yep. You normally shouldn't age a rosé, but this is one you could age up to five years and still get really good experience out of, in my opinion. Mm. That is very, very good. Yeah, that's very a, good. Yeah, this, this is just very traditional European rosé that there's a lot of time and effort put into it's this. It's very light. Yeah. For yeah. a rosé, very light. I could, I could see myself getting another bottle of this. And I've had some Courts de Provence that were so bitter that i was like mm, i don't know but this one i i think i'll keep this one in stock as my go-to rose actually I, I truly wish that the huntress was with us for this one oh she would absolutely fall in love yes with uh, the huntress uh on the next round maybe so oh yeah so well miss very very good since we are uh, on this subject so this is a sparkling. Now, for all you who uh, don't know, here's also a little lesson for you kids. This is how you properly open a bottle of sparkling wine. You don't and let it fizz all <laughs> over the place, losing all the flavor and all the carbonation and all the things that you can extract out of it. That's, I mean, come on. There's, Let's be civilized. There's some farmers and some distill and some vineyard masters who put a lot of good time and effort to bring this to you. Treat it with some respect. So you keep your tongue. <laughs> hey i'm looking forward to getting it on my tongue i'm a little impatient come on so you keep your thumb there we go there we go you keep your thumb on the top as a safety you unwind the wire entirely you keep your hand keep your hand around the cork spin the bottle on top spin the cork Keep your hand on the bottom of the bottle. Spin, 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 and eventually you're gonna hear just a little. Ooh, that was underwhelming. Yes, but now all the carbonation and all the flavor has stayed in the wine, so it's actually going to be and also one of the more fulfilling flavors you've gotten from this expression. Also a little bit of a difference, this one is chilled, whereas this yes. one is not. Yes, and that is going to mute some of the flavors a bit. That's why Europeans really don't like it if you want to put uh, ice in a wine or they don't like a chill wine because it does close down the flavors a little bit. Room temperature really brings it out. And well, with our typical color differences. Yeah, there is. Yeah, it's... You can't see it so much in the bottle, but, you know, that little bit in the glass there, this one is far more pink. Yep, this one is almost like a yellowish like hmm like a golden color yeah yeah it's gold well this one is a uh, very pink strawberry mm -hmm. it's this very strawberry but like i said this one's clean this one's got a lot of that thick sugars that i i it's just i'm getting it immediately let's see A lot of that strawberry right off the bat. Yep, yep. Um, very sweet, overwhelms your tongue. Kind of like, a, reminds me of soda. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like just the, in the how Jones it, soda. Yeah, yeah, in, in how it, uh, yeah, it just kind of bubbles on your palate. Yeah, this is good stuff. What, what did this cost you? Um, I actually got it on sale for $10.99. Well done, well done. Uh, this cost a few more dollars. I would imagine uh, uh, so. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I I could see going to this as a good party time drink for ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is an incredibly good value. Uh, Definitely a step up from the uh, Boone's Farm we discussed in previous. <laughs> yikes, yikes. Yeah, that was that was not. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try to avoid the farm of Boone <laughs> whenever I can. Tony G seems to love it, uh, but I can I can do without. So, <laughs> hmm. Well, Nurse Ratchet, I'm going to ask you your opine as to these two wines. I think this is the epiphany of the difference between you and I. I am somewhat of the overly sweet, bubbly, party wine. Much like your personality. Exactly. Whereas you are the more traditional, 
I am actually going to be the one that breaks the tiebreaker here. Oh. I am actually going to give this one to you. I am. Oh, I appreciate that, miss. Thank you very much. <laughs> I give you three bows for you know, being that modest. Thank you. Thank you, miss. So, folks, the prize we have been competing for <laughs> in this masterful competition was not something, not something so inconsequential as like, the Hope Diamond or the Gold of Fort Knox. No, 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 no. We compete for a much greater prize. The Golden Bottle, an empty bottle of Stella Gold. <laughs> and in this competition, I have claimed this prize that I shall cherish forever. Ash, Nurse Ratchet, it has been quite a competition, miss. It has been quite a time. I must say, I do agree, this is a fine, fine rosé that I'm going to be keeping on tap for dinners and occasions. And this rosé that you brought, I am going to do what I can to keep on tap for parties and get-togethers. And folks are just wanting to enjoy a good drink. So this has been an excellent, excellent uh, little soiree into wine, and I suspect sometime in the future we might even have a round two. We might. might. You know, I'll give you a chance to rematch for this incredible prize. I mean, this is... What I have in store is more of a marathon. Ooh, okay. Keep your eyes on this space, folks. We will give you the previews. So, as the champion of wine on my own podcast, boy, <laughs> God, I, thank God I was able to pull that one off, folks. I mean, boy, that would have... <laughs> That'd been kind of embarrassing, but um, so I do, I do appreciate that. And uh, before we uh, take off, there's a, something you you were wanting to say. Is that correct? We have another reason to raise our glasses. Ah, hmm. Now, would that reason happen to have anything to do with the fact that the Mayan apocalypse is also here? Would that would would it may have something to do with that? It may also well, have something to do with my. How, Change of normal how are you, how are, uh, get, get over here. Come on. How did you get here, Maya? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Here, come on. Come on over. Now, for those who don't know, the Mayan Apocalypse and Nurse Ratchet have been a bit of an item. Kind of, actually. Even considerably. And uh, they've taken this itemage to the point where I think they have a little announcement that they'd like to make right here at the KOE Nation. An exclusive right here. You heard it here first, folks. Maya, Ash, take it away. Would you like to tell them or would you like me to? Prefer you would. But I suppose if it comes down to it, I guess I, I can go ahead and nurse Ratchet in the Mine Apocalypse have been in a relationship for the last Three years. Three years? I knew that. Don't look at me wrong. Nurse Ratchet has agreed to be my wife. Oh! This will be happening next month. Next July days. 9th. We will be doing a podcast later on that night due to our buddy Phil, KOE. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, night. Fifteen days. Well, let's uh, let it never be said that the two of you were tardy to an appointment. My goodness. Uh, so I <laughs> raised all these two wines. Uh, other than that, like, I mean, I'm there you go, super, Matt. Super stoked. You can have the rest of that me, one. Let me try sir, these, because we all need to uh, raise glass. Let me yeah. let me try these. Shit, you give me two. Yep, yep. I, I I'm good with my rose. I can do two different colors. But I mean, here, Kaylee Nation, it has been announced. The marriage of the mine apocalypse and Nurse Ratchet. And so I congratulate the soon to be future Mr. and Mrs. Nurse Ratchet. It's going to be an amazing, like, it, tears will be shed, doves will fly. It's going to be an amazing, amazing time. Yeah, we might have pigeons because we're too poor for doves, but. Whatever you say, Mr. Ratchet. <laughs> This is not how this was supposed to go, all right? Thank you, Kate. But it, 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 yeah, this is, this is supposed to be Mr. and Mrs. Mind Apocalypse. <laughs> no, nothing about nurse to it. 
Just so, so y'all know. Well, it's all about compromises, Maya. Um, Phil, shut up. <laughs> your, your belt got taken years ago. You have no oh, time. I'm a multiple time champion, sir. But, folks, let's uh, please in the comments, like, share, subscribe, and wish these two crazy kids luck in all the crazy adventures they got going. And uh, I don't like that one. It don't like you. And this one. as I'm known to say around here, folks, all that being said, this has been the wine challenge between me and Nurse Ratchet, and more importantly, the announcement of the lifetime tag team partnership of the Mine Apocalypse and Nurse Ratchet. So I'm looking forward to this, folks. I'm going to be there. You better be there. We will all be pod. I will be podcasting it, streaming it, so you can social distance. Be there in spirit. So, folks, join us. And you two crazy kids, good luck to you. You don't social distance, and fuck you. <laughs> Later, folks.